Hello everyone. This morning I'm just going to do a real quick review over a few warm-up exercises just to get the body moving. Uh, things that I think are really beneficial in terms of slow, gentle practice uh, that you can incorporate into any point in your day. I like to do them when I wake up uh, or before I go to bed sometimes just to get everything opened up a little bit. Uh, you can play with when in the day you want to try some of these things. Very, very simple, very soft exercises to get you started. The first one, we're going to start with feet a little bit apart, knees bent, hips relaxed. And we're just going to roll back on the shoulder and drop the arms back down. So you should feel the sides of the body open up. The shoulders will rise slightly and you're going to drop through the elbows and down. You're really looking to open up the lats, the sides of the body. Keeping the tip of the head up and tall. And just letting the breath flow naturally. You can do as many repetitions on these as you like. I'm just going to do a few for today as we review. I'm going to come back now and go forward through the shoulder, letting the elbows move to the front and the hands drop down. So again, I'm trying to feel myself open up from the lat. I feel the pressure on my feet against the floor. I'm almost getting a sensation of floating up off of the hip. As we drop back down and through. Head up, rising as the lats open and dropping back down. Now one last time on this one. Shifting to a rotation through the waist. I'm going to bring one shoulder back. Slight lift through the lat. And you think about this as alternating on that rolling of the shoulder. Bring one side back and down. And as long as you're turning from the center of your body, you should feel your opposite shoulder moving to the front. We're going to change directions on this now. Bring it forward. Elbow to the front. Same emphasis, thinking about your waist doing more of the work and your lat doing more of the work. Your arm is doing very little, your legs are doing very little. Just being responsive to your core movement. Now we'll bring that down into our hips, bring it around in a big circle. You want to try to keep your tip of the head in one place. Letting your body tip slightly in each direction. So you can think like a upside down ice cream cone. Right, you've got the point of the cone on the top. And you're making a big wide base with the hip. Now we bring it back the other direction. Just relaxed with the legs, soft with the breath. Good. Now we're going to bring it into our figure eight. The figure eight can be a little bit more complex. All right, the main thing I want people thinking about right now is keep the center of the body tall. And you're going to move towards your leg with your back. As we twist, we're going to move towards our leg with our back. It's like we're sitting back onto the leg. All right, as you do this one, be conscientious of your knees. Make sure your knees aren't dropping in or falling in. You want to keep those open. That opening will help keep those knees healthy. Now we're going to bring it back the other direction, shifting. Now the front of our body is moving towards that leg, front of the body towards the leg. 
when you're looking to find where the figure eight is at in this shape, I think about that space on the floor right underneath my center line of the body. So if I was holding a stick down from my center or a plumb line down from my center, you would see it swinging through this figure eight shape below me. Okay, That's where that figure eight is at. You'll notice my hips aren't tipping up and down. They're staying fairly flat through the motion. It's more about gliding on this plane, all right, this flat plane. We'll bring those feet together. Just a little space between them, hands on those knees, and little circles. All right, you don't want to go too big on the circles. Just keep it small. Now, one really valuable tool on this one is you can think about that back being really straight through like you're trying to sit your tailbone down to the floor, your bottom down to the floor, as you're circling those knees, and that'll help a little bit with also stretching out that torso for you. Now we'll bring that circle back the other direction now. I want to make sure, especially with the warm-ups and any really repetitive actions that we're working on both sides of the body, Now we're going to step those feet apart, shoulder width, circling inward with the knees. Same thing, letting that tailbone drop down and through. You can use those hands on the knees for a little support. And as you get better, you can let your shoulders follow your hips your knees and your elbows working together with each other, your wrists and ankles. So you should feel your upper body opening just like your lower body. We're gonna take it, circle it from the inside to the outside now. So everything working in those two different directions. Straight through the back, straight through the head. And do your best to relax through the movements. And that's one of the things that is easiest to say, but sometimes the hardest to do. Now, come back up. We do a couple more here. We're going to take those hands, place them just above the knee here with the heel of the palm, keeping the legs straight. And you can work at whatever you're level you're comfortable working at and we're going to fold our body down to a place where it's flat all right if you can't quite do that you can be up on those thighs a little bit and fold here eventually we want to work down to a place where we're flat with the body all right like a table all right relaxed on those knees if you feel the kneecap lift you're using your leg too much you need that kneecap to actually be relaxed through there and folding at that hip joint. For some of you who have more flexibility, you can definitely fold that body down lower, all right, and release the tension or the pressure from the arms, as long as you don't roll the body like this, right? We wanna keep things extended, lengthened through that motion, and think about lifting up towards the ceiling, towards the corner of the ceiling with our tailbone to get all that additional stretch. All right, you should feel it through the back, through the hamstrings, through the backs of the legs. Okay. Now from here, we're just going to bring it down into a squat. Let You can bring your hands to the floor if you need to. All right, whatever you need to do. And you can open up those feet a little bit if you need to as well. But we're going to bring it down to the bottom here. If you can't quite do this, you can, if you got something really stable around, right? You can hold on to it to give yourself a little support. Um, you know, slowly work down into this place. I know there's a lot of people that I worked with in the past who feel like they're never going to get here. But, you know, it might take, you know, three months. It might take a year even. But uh, most of the people that I've worked with can eventually find their way down into this space. It's actually a lot about balance. There are some flexibility related things, but a lot of it actually comes down to balance. 
The better you get with this, the more you want to draw that hip towards your heels and the more you want your upper body to rise a little bit and be extended up through the tip of the head. My hands are out in front of me a little bit for counterbalancing. You just be careful with yourself on this one. All right, like I said, balance is definitely a concern here. Right, and we can bring it up, right? You can either place your hands on the floor and roll yourself back up the opposite direction and lift and stand. Or you can think about the tip of your head floating up to the ceiling, pushing your hips below yourself to allow yourself to rise. Several different ways you can come up from that. Okay. Make sure whichever way you come up, you come up slow. Right, now we're going to move down to that leg, circling at that hip joint, letting the knee and the ankle freely circle. And place those hands just to the hip. Standing relaxed through one leg. And then we'll change directions here. As we're doing this one, you can put a little awareness on that heel. That heel is actually drawing little circles behind you. There's a point of pressing that heel back and down and through, and then rolling it back up, letting it float back up. You can almost feel like pressing down with that heel in the back will help you understand where your circle is going in your leg. And that circle is going to translate all the way up through the leg, through the spiral. And right, we'll change sides here. So as we circle that leg out, we're going to feel pressing down and back around with that heel. And I'll feel a little circle being drawn behind myself with my heel. That's once again translating into rolling my ankle around, opening out with my knee, and actually opening outward with my hip a little bit here. I really want to feel my hip go that way when my leg goes out. I'm going to bring it back the other direction now. Rolling in, pressing back. One small note on this action. You don't want to put the foot in front of you when rolling these ankles. All right, you actually want to put that toe behind yourself. That's going to help you a lot with the proper positioning for the different points in the leg. All right. Can you circle your ankle from in front? Yes, you can. All right. Is it going to change the way that your body is acting and moving when you put the foot behind you? Yes, it is. So I encourage you to put that foot back behind you a little bit just about one foot distance behind yourself, okay? So those are the primary warm-up exercises that I like to utilize. I think they're very valuable um, for just getting things moving and relaxed and softened up. Uh, you know, one thing that I think I forgot to mention is when you're doing that slow squatting action, it's not about leg strength or any of that kind of stuff. It's really about allowing your back to open up through that space, right? We're letting the tailbone hang down off of those knees, off of those legs, so that we get some opening through the back. Because our goal, one of our main goals in our Tai Chi practice is to get everything to expand and to open. All right? It's a very counterintuitive way that, than from what most of us are used to doing when we move. All right? Most of us are used to using contraction to move. Most of us are used to using uh, you know, compression Right? Like when we're thinking about stretching or folding the body, uh, a lot of times it's not sort of wired into us yet about how to open or expand or separate uh, from the center of the body outward. So there are some just little things to think about. Right? Use these exercises to get yourself moving, to open up. And these are exercises that you can pull from sitting on the couch you know, to getting you moving to building into that next step in your fitness. Right? So... Uh, keep on working on these, and I will see you on the next one.